Hey yo, and welcome to my first ever redstone build episode. Um, if you've been around the channel a while, you know I do a lot of data packs and command block stuff. This is my first major project using just redstone. If you've been around, you also know that I really like doing maze generators. Uh, that was my first data pack episode was a maze generator. Um, it was the finale for my command block series I did over the summer. And from a comment on that episode, I decided it would be a fun challenge to try to make a maze generator using just redstone. And a couple months later, here we are. Uh, so this is the maze generator that I've created. Um, it's a completely modular system, so each cell is identical. It's this one chunk sized cell that has um, all of the logic needed. Just place a bunch of them next to each other, press a button to start, and the maze generates. You can also see over here that there's uh, lanterns on top that show where the maze is, but then there's also just a kind of simple stone dungeon maze that uh, players can actually go through with uh, piston doors and all that. Uh, so yeah, the rest of this episode is going to be a in-depth explanation of how things work. Uh, I'll start with a overview of the algorithm used uh, before we get into any redstone, and then I'll go through each layer here in the module and show how it works and how it all works together to generate a maze. So uh, there's chapters down below in the description. Feel free to jump around to whatever parts interest you, and I hope you learn something new, because I know I learned a lot about redstone in building this. This maze is generated using a depth-first search algorithm. If you want a more in-depth analysis of that algorithm, you can check out my Five Block Fridays episode on the maze generator. But as a quick overview, the way the algorithm works is you start in a grid of cells with all of the walls closed, and each iteration through, you choose a random neighbor. If that neighbor hasn't been visited yet, you remove the wall between you and that neighbor and move to that cell. If all of your neighbors have already been visited, you backtrack to the cell you were in before you got to this one, and you keep repeating this process, and you know you're done when you're in the starting cell and you have no unvisited neighbors left. The first layer here is the initial entry layer. This is a layer that gets a pulse from a neighboring cell the first time we visit this cell. Uh, so we have the same input on all four sides, just repeated. And it starts by going into this pulse limiter that we limit the pulse to be one tick long. And then it goes three places. Uh, the first place it goes is down to the backtrack layer. It goes up to the visited layer and in turn to the door layer. And then we go forward to the central area that all four inputs go to the same place. And this observer line takes it up to the randomizer layer. The visited layer, this blue layer here, is the one that lets us tell our neighbors that we've already been visited and also lets us check our neighbors to see if they've been visited. Uh, so on our initial entry, we send that piston up that moves this redstone block in place. And this is a short enough chain that any of the four redstone blocks being in place will power all of these output repeaters. And then likewise, we have our input repeaters that go up to the randomizer logic for choosing which cell to visit next. This yellow layer here is the selector layer. It's probably the most complicated. It controls the logic of choosing which cell to visit next, and also detecting if we've visited all of our neighbors already, in which case it sends the backtrack signal. 
So this layer starts when the observer line from the entry layer comes up. It goes into this randomizer. I'll explain how the randomizer works in a bit, but essentially we have one of these four redstone torches gets turned on. When a torch gets turned on, the wire turns on, of course. If the neighbor in that direction hasn't been visited yet, this target block will be down, and so we'll have power go into the block, into that repeater, and to this observer line. This observer line goes down to the initial entry layer for the neighboring cell. If the neighboring cell has already been visited, this repeater will be on from the neighboring cell's visited layer. That will push this piston up and push that target block out of the way, if I can get back to it. Um, in that case, the redstone signal will go past this repeater and into this one, and the process repeats for the next cell. Um, and so on and so forth. If all four neighboring cells have already been visited, then we have this entire thing is a giant AND gate. And so if they've all been visited, eventually the, um, the signal will propagate through the entire yellow ring here. And all four of these torches will turn off. When all of those are off, this torch will turn on uh, because, like I said, it's just a giant AND gate. This observer line goes to the backtrack layer, and then this repeater here just makes sure once this torch is turned on, this outer ring will stay on until we get the reset signal. Here I have a copy of the randomizer circuit, just stretched out into a straight line instead of looping around itself like it does in the actual module. As the base of our randomizer, we have a dispenser, and that dispenser has four different shulker boxes in it. Each shulker box is just full of wooden shovels to a different amount, and I've named them here to show what signal strength they get when read with a comparator. So we put the shulker box, we place it when the dispenser is powered, then depending on what the signal strength is, one of these four gates will be triggered. Here we have uh, these gates are AND gates of a sort, so it's saying if the first wire is powered and the second one is not, then the gate passes and the lamp will turn on. So here, if it's exactly a signal strength of one, this will turn on, this will not, and it will propagate through. Uh, same thing for the other ones. We have a signal strength of six, and if it's exactly six, it passes. If it's exactly 11, it passes. And then if it's 15, it passes for the final one. And then we just have, coming out of the very first one, a repeater with a delay of four to this piston to break the shulker box uh, just as soon as it's placed. So we get a random one of these four turns on each time the dispenser is powered. And of course this hopper here just returns it back to the dispenser. The orange layer is the backtrack layer. It is what gets triggered if we've already visited all four of our neighbors and there's an observer line that comes down to this orange layer, and we send a signal out in all four directions, but it will only go through if this orange concrete has been moved down. So it will only really go through in the direction that we had our initial entry from, uh, because that should be the only orange concrete that got pushed down. The other ones should still be up and out of the way, and so the backtrack signal will only go in the direction we actually entered from the first time. This purple layer is the layer that controls opening the doors between cells. So when we get our initial entry from a neighbor, this redstone block gets moved up, and then that signal gets sent up this redstone torch chain. 
into this target block, and then this goes up to these doors. Now the clever thing with this one is that you'll notice there's doors on all four sides here, which means between any two cells there's actually two sets of doors. So if you imagine that there's another cell right here, it would be a mirrored version of this, where we have you know, these target blocks and then we have concrete like this. And this means that this redstone torch will get turned off if either of these redstone torch lines are turned on. And so it just takes this one being up to open both the piston door here and the piston door that would be right next to it from a neighboring cell. Um, if you look over here in the actual maze, you'll see that's what's happening here. So just this redstone torch is on, not this one, but both of the doors are open. Um, so that's you know the bit of cleverness there that gets those doors working. The bottom layer here is the reset line. So we get an entry from either this side or this side, and we propagate the signal outward in the other two directions. So when the reset line turns on, you'll see on the bottom layer here, we have the backtrack signal pistons all get extended. Uh, so we just clear which direction we came in from. We also send this signal upward to uh, these lines here. This is just to stop it from sending any signals that might be in process. Um, so say we're in the middle of generating a maze and we want to reset it. This just blocks cells from talking to each other. If we come up here, this resets our visited layer. So we clear if we have been visited. It also disconnects this redstone block from the line going up to the door, so it closes all of the doors. And then we also, um, sort of related to the visited, we send a signal here to force this piston to retract, and that closes all of the target blocks on the selector layer, which will in turn cut off um, the system thinking it's visited all of its neighbors already. Our final layer here is the redstone lamps. Uh, they just turn on to indicate the state of the rest of the machine. They aren't strictly necessary because the maze is completely playable without them, but it does give a nice visual indicator of what's happening. So we have on each of the four sides, we have these four torches that are connected to the door line. So when the door opens, these four torches will turn on, which then means the handful of lamps around them will also turn on. Let me just break that. Door opens. We get these ones turning on. This blue line here is connected to our visited layer. So when we're visited, this line will turn off and all of these torches will turn on. Uh, you'll notice the center here is hollow and you probably noticed that when it was generating the maze the first time. That one is connected to our visited layer and so when we have all four of our neighbors have already been visited and we send the backtrack signal we also send that line up here. And so once the center is filled in, you know that cell is done. It's not getting any more neighbors that it's going to open up doors to, and it won't ever visit that cell again in generating the maze. You can see if I just break that line here, that turns on, and we have our filled in circle that shows that it's done. 
just some finishing touches that are required to have the entire system work. On each cell along the outside border, I have just a redstone block pointing in to the visited layer. This will tell this cell that it's already visited this non-existent cell, so it won't ever try to enter it. Uh, we also have right here, this redstone block forces this door to stay closed. Uh, that's because when we send our initial signal to start generating the entire maze, we don't want to open this door, uh, just because the initial signal is always guaranteed to just have a single path leading away from it. It will never be a fork. So we have our actual entrance and exits in these two spots here. And similar to keeping that door forced closed, with this redstone block here going into this torch, this forces this door to always stay open. Other than being really large and really slow, the main flaw with this system is in the selector layer. You may have guessed it based on how it works, or noticed from this initial maze that it seems to hug the wall. Uh, that just comes from the fact that when we choose a random direction, if we've already visited that cell, we just continue along clockwise until we get to the next available cell. Um, so if there's anything I could fix, I would probably fix that. But otherwise, I'm happy with the system as it is. I learned a lot in the build process, and you know, maybe you'll be seeing a, a bit more redstone from me in the future. But at least for next steps, I'm working on some ideas for Five Block Fridays Season 2. Um, and then if there's any fans of Brandon Sanderson's Mistborn, I have a really fun data pack coming out next month for that. Um, but yeah, that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something about redstone or randomizers or maze generators or pretty much anything. Um, and I hope to see you all again in the future.